Good morning, uh, everyone. No, so the text is not there. Um, also, so uh, maybe a bit about, uh, a bit about me. Um, I'm a, a marketing and communication girl, uh, having mainly worked for the uh, technology and ICT sector. So when I've been asked to um, give advice on a cultural uh, topic, and uh, mainly for months 2015, because I don't know how many people among you are aware that in 2015, months in uh, Eno will be European capital of culture. The tagline of uh, this project is where technology meets culture. So I was quite surprised because my cultural background is quite limited. To me, culture was something very disconnected, cold, um, distant, and mainly um, about architecture, theater. And, and when I was visiting museum with, with my, my, my school when I was a kid, it was quite boring. And thanks to technology, we had the chance to have that kind of experience, meaning having a touch screen in a church, giving you uh, the possibility to choose among five or five languages uh, and to be able to read some comments about uh, the church. So um, this um, gave me the opportunity to rethink about the definition about culture. Culture is everything around us. It's about design, it's about cooking, it's about psychology and the comportmental uh, um, typology, I would say, of people in, in the world. It's about religion, language, social habits, music, and of course about architecture, sculptures, painting, etc. So uh, this is where uh, most 2015 uh, will go with the tagline like where technology meets culture using warm technology, slow tech, fluid city, social innovation, social interaction, and digital and creative hacking. Um, if we look at the recent experience from the European Parliament, uh, the parliamentarian in Brussels, they create a really immersive experience where the visitors have the possibility to really walk through the construction of Europe, uh, to really uh, interact with uh, the different cities, to really feel how big is Europe and to ask questions about the history and the construction of Europe. A similar experience has been uh, created recently in Marseille. Marseille is the current European capital of culture, 2013, where they decided to project uh, on the ceiling, on the floors and on the walls, masterpieces of Vincent van Gogh and Monet. So people can really walk through um, the, the paintings, the masterpiece, and they can touch it, which is quite new, I would say, in this experience. It's really uh, a video mapping, putting art at the center. Um, another kind of experience in theatre uh, in the Connecticut, they created tweet seats. So at the back of the room, uh, tweeters have the possibility to interact around uh, the, the, the play they are watching uh, or looking at, and really to share their feedback while the rest of the, 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 um, the visitors, I would say, uh, can really enjoy the play. So it's really uh, making um, the, the, the interaction between the new technology, the social media, and uh, some classical, I would say, culture pieces like uh, theaters and, and plays. Thinking about interaction, um, if we think about Microsoft technology with Kinect and the ability to turn every surface into a touch interface, we can really imagine how um, we could have the possibility to play with the paintings and the wall. Another experience um, in the MoMA is really the augmented art experience, where people can really have an extra experience, an extra information, and get more information about uh, um, such, a, I would say, uh, an exhibition, uh, and really also have that kind of second screen experience like we, we used to heard about television and, and uh, broadcast like The Voice, uh, where the, 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 um, the, the speakers and, and the, um, the participants, but also uh, the viewers are really interacting in real time. Another nice experience in, uh, in New York in the, in the Brooklyn uh, Museum is Click. Click was uh, a crowd curated photograph exhibition. So this exhibition was built exclusively with the pictures that the inhabitants of Brooklyn have taken. It's still visible online. 
We've talked about um, interaction, immersive experience, social media, and these are the kind of experience that we want to bring to more 2015. And for the first time, we are really sharing today the first project of MOS 2015. It's called Café Europa. HP is one of the partners of the project, so we thank you, uh, HP, for this. Uh, so Café Europa will be um, a series of containers placed uh, in Belgium, in Mons, but also in other uh, European uh, uh, capitals where we're going to have all stages of the creation of culture, but also linked with technology. So clearly, there will be young kids, seniors, developers, putting all together when they want in those containers, giving and receiving training about gaming development, about um, designing uh, new objects, recycling objects. They will work hands-on on those containers and then have the possibility to really share and show it in a, an exhibition room, but also with the other European capital participating into the project thanks to the interactive wall that you can see there with the, the guy saying hello. And really to enter into multi-site uh, gaming experience. Um, so they will have the possibility also to, um, I would say, come on board with really disconnected people and to really make a link between culture and technology between youngers and seniors. Another um, um, uh, interesting aspect is what the Tate Modern in London has done um, with Wondermind. Wondermind is a video game uh, which gives the possibility uh, at the Tate Modern, in the gaming uh, division of the Tate Modern, to the kids to really explore new, new neurosciences, sorry, uh, and to uh, um, uh, really participate into an experience where the left brain and right brain can work together and really to develop, we just talked about brain gym, really to develop those abilities. This is really considered as being part of a cultural experience. And what Tate Modern has done with um, that uh, gaming section is now also available online. So kids and their parents can continue to play uh, with uh, Wondermind. Um, so we, we've talked about um, experiencing uh, immersive experience, co-creation of content with the co-created uh, exhibition, also social media. Um, and so we see more and more cultural um, uh, players going into that, that uh, mood, I would say, of sharing. And maybe some of you have heard about the recent initiative that Musée Van Gogh has taken in Amsterdam. So uh, there are the repository of the majority of Van Gogh's masterpieces. And they recently decided to publish those masterpieces on a website in HD uh, under the uh, Creative Commons license to really give the opportunity to every citizen to play with those masterpieces. So those, that, that part of the art is leaving the museum and becoming really uh, available and shareable online. In early 20th century Paris, a group of writers and artists called the Surrealists invented the exquisite corpse. A creative exercise in which people compose a sentence, one word at a time, without seeing what had already been written. Now, imagine if you could add alternative words at any point along the line. And then imagine if this spirit of shared creativity was transferred to the web. If we use this as our inspiration, and instead allow people to create short animations, linked together and exploring a specific theme. These animations could take any number of paths, from one beginning to many possible endings. Right here in your web browser, you may contribute to anyone's creation and steer it in any direction you choose. Or start the story of your own by creating the seed animation for a new tree. Our hope is that through the collective creativity of the web, an ever-expanding forest of narrative paths will grow.
This is uh, an experimental uh, project from Google with Google Chrome. They started it online, so every uh, user could really contribute to a bigger project where everyone was contributing to a small part of the project, not knowing what the rest of the project would be. So they were contributing by giving words and images. It was such a success that the Tate Modern decided to really open a room at the Tate Modern where people can really interact with the project while others are really participating online. This kind of co-creation and collaborative art project is really the kind of project that we want to build for most 2015. Um, I don't have many uh, of the tangible uh, projects to show you, but the objective is really to show you how inspiration uh, can come from the cultural sector to technology and to share those uh, aspects with you. So I really hope uh, we're going to have the opportunity to meet each other at, at most 2050, and I thank you.